All right guys, so we just got this cylinder head back from the shop. We ended up going with all new valves and they're only the, the five that I showed earlier in the other videos, those were the only ones that, that were bent, but so, since I already had the cylinder head out and for only uh, you know another $200 more, I got a complete valve job. And I got all the valves, I was able to get them for about $130 online uh, on eBay for all the valves and then the machine shop cost about almost $400. So you wanna keep that in mind if you are looking to do this job. Okay, so before we can put our cylinder head back on here, we're gonna need to clean the surface. So what I like to use for cleaning is very basic. It's just I use a razor blade, keep it flat, and just scrape off all the old material, all the old uh, gasket, uh, cylinder head gasket material. Uh, don't dig in with this, you know, like in these corners, if you see it, these are all, this half is pretty much cleaned, I've cleaned it. These dark areas that you see, these are just microscopic, uh, material from the old gasket that are inside the pores of the metal and they're not going to really matter. Um, what you want to make sure you take off is anything you can feel with your fingers or with the razor and again don't dig in with the razor especially here you know you just keep it flat you scrape 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 you know break clean scrape scrape and just do that throughout the whole the, this whole area on top of the block and you should be good to go same thing goes on the cylinder head side Okay, another thing you want to make sure you do is that you clean the inside of these bolt holes that are for your cylinder head bolts, okay? So you want to get some uh, compressed air, put it here, put a rag around it, thoroughly clean it, make sure you get any coolant especially or any other dirt or debris out of there. And then after you scrape off the top, you also want to just do this quickly again, get anything, if you, you know, if you dropped any dirt in there, you want to get that out as well, okay? Okay, what I like to do next is just uh, bring two pistons up at a time to top that center and then just uh, use some uh, brake clean and uh, a clean rag to clean the top of the pistons as best as I can. Again, don't use, don't even use a razor on top of these because if you get around the edge and then you start scratching things, you do a lot more harm than good. Okay, also you want to make sure you thoroughly clean this, uh, these walls and for these I like to use uh, these blue shop towels with some brake clean. Not a whole lot. And then I just wipe them down, okay? Make sure you do this a couple of times and you get all the dirt and debris that's on these cylinder walls out, okay? Okay, so after thoroughly cleaning here, we're gonna put on our uh, head gasket. Uh, also, it's kinda on the video, when I finish uh, editing it, it's gonna look like I cleaned this in 30 seconds, but good, good, a good 30 minutes away for this. And then when you put your head gasket, you wanna pay attention to to right here, you want to make sure this is lined up because you can put this the wrong way easily and not know it. Okay, so yeah, put on our head gasket. Okay, next step normally would be to put the cylinder number one at top that center, which is this guy, which is right now at top that center. But I'm actually going to put the cylinder head on first, then put the camshafts in. So you know, I'm not. We're not 100% sure the camshafts haven't moved and whatnot. So actually, I'm going to turn this back a little bit. So none of the cylinders are at top dead center. So there's more space there, uh, which gives us a little, uh, you know, gives us a little leeway for mistakes if you put the camshafts in wrong. And then once uh, I'm sure the camshafts are in and I have the camshaft at top dead center, we'll just turn that clockwise a couple of teeth and then line up these markings. There's a marking on the back here that you will need to line up with a mark that's gonna be on your uh, crankshaft gear, okay? Okay, so before we put our cylinder head on, we're going to make sure we clean the surface the same way we clean the, the block. And then next, we're going to put in our exhaust manifold because it's a lot easier to put it with the cylinder head out. Then we're going to tighten these bolts going from the center out. And these are tying down to 22 foot-pounds. Okay, next we're ready to throw this guy on here. gonna take some wiggling but I think I got this side in. Nope. There we go. Double check and make sure you didn't move the head gasket. Looks like we didn't and it should be all set now. Okay I should have probably put this earlier before I put the cylinder head on but we can still just Pull on this and put this uh, gasket for our exhaust manifold and hopefully line it up 
we'll see. Okay, actually, before we uh, tighten our cylinder head bolts, we're gonna, you know, just like I said, we put the gasket in for this exhaust manifold to the turbo. Next, you wanna put in these uh, bolts and start them by hand, you know, get them down as much as you can. And you need to be able to do this by hand. If you can't do it by hand, that means they're not lined up correctly. Okay, next it's time to put in our cylinder head bolts. We're gonna be using uh, new bolts. Actually, it's required to use new bolts. And we're gonna be going from the center out, which is we're gonna go one here, 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 and then work our way out, okay? And we first, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna hand tighten them using the special tool. And then uh, the first uh, pass, we're gonna tighten them down to, yeah, we're gonna tighten them down to 30 foot pounds going in the same pattern. And then the second pass, we'll turn them 108 degrees, which is basically half a turn, okay? Also, I don't know if I mentioned, but you need to get oil on the threads of all your head bolts so you get the proper torque, okay? Okay, so after we hand tighten them, uh, the first pass is gonna be 30 foot pounds. And we go in the same pattern, okay? Okay, next we're gonna do the half a turn. Actually, I'm gonna split that half a turn into two passes of 90 degrees. So I'm gonna do 90 degrees, do the same, same pattern from center out, then do another 90 degrees, which is, would be from here to here, and then, uh, then, then we're done, okay? There's one. Okay, now for the second pass. Okay, before we can put our uh, camshaft on, we're gonna put in our uh, half moon seal. That's for our camshaft chain tensioner. Make sure it's seated all the way and it's as even as you can. Then we get our camshaft chain tensioner gasket and you need to apply our TV silicone to the areas that's gonna be going over the seal. But I went ahead and I applied to the all the way on the bottom where it's gonna be sitting, but you definitely wanna make sure you get enough RTV silicone here so you get a good seal, okay? You know what, actually, I'm just gonna put a dab of RTV silicone right on the edges just to make sure we don't get a leak here. Okay, next we put our uh, gasket back on here. Okay, next we get our camshafts and gently try to lower it and position. There are dowel pins for your uh, chain tensioner, so you want to make sure your chain tensioner is properly seated over those when you put it in, okay? Okay, next we're going to start putting on our bearing cast. We're not going to tighten them yet because uh, we need to double check our timing on our timing chain tensioner, but we're just going to lay them on here for now, okay? It goes without saying, every single one that you took up from uh, whatever spot you took it out, it needs to go exactly into the same spot, okay? Okay, what I'm going to do next is actually start tying down these bearing caps for our camshafts. We're going to start by, you know, according to the book, you need to do this one, then this one, then we put in these. These have the arrow that's for the, that you check the timing on your camshafts. And then you put in this, and then you line those up, and I'll show you those. Uh, but actually, before I put this on the cylinder head, I ended up uh, moving the camshafts. There is a notch on this camshaft pulley. Yeah, we need to get that to face up or close to up as possible because that's where top dead center is. But, uh, you know, I just had someone hold this camshaft chain tensioner then I just rotated these camshafts together. Hopefully, I don't think they moved. It's really hard for them to move if you keep them, if you remove them and put them back the same way I took them out. So you want to keep that in mind. So I don't think they moved. We just need to uh, tighten these down and then check our timings, okay? And the torque spec for these bolts, uh, for these camshaft bearing caps are uh, 8 foot-pounds, okay? And you want to do this a little bit at a time, okay? And I'm actually going to jump between them just so it goes in even, okay? There's one.
Okay, now these two bearing caps. Okay, now before I take out this uh, this holding tool for our camshaft chain tensioner, I need to. I want to show you the markings for your camshaft chain tensioner. Well, basically, these are the arrows that's on this bearing cap that you will need to line up with those. As you can see, they're a little off right now on both sides. I'm hoping or thinking that's because we got this camshaft chain tensioner in and it's holding it in. Once we let that go, that will expand, pulling these a little closer, lining those up. Uh, that's my hope, at least. <laughs> okay, and uh, so yeah, we're gonna do next is uh, remove that piece. Actually, you know, I'm gonna put this, uh, tighten this camshaft cap at the end, because uh, that's what the book says, but then we're gonna remove that, okay? Okay, before we put this bearing cap in, it's a good idea to apply some uh, RTV silicone to these areas, this center, and then the corners here, so you don't get any oil leaks, okay? Okay, now we can remove this piece. Go. It's not gonna apply tension right now because it's not full of oil, but you know I'm positive once this car gets start starts going, this is gonna this piston is gonna move up and push these camshafts a little closer together and line up those uh, marks perfectly. Okay. Okay. You know what? Now I'm just gonna line up this mark on this on the camshaft. So I just threw on our valve cover. Now we're just gonna line these up and uh, then we'll be able to get a closer look at our, uh, the marks on our uh, camshaft chain tensioner, okay? This is not far off anyway. I mean, we're talking a quarter of an inch. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so lining that up, uh, yeah, I'll get this side closer. This side is still a little off, but uh, it's just, uh, you know, it just makes sense for this to be this way since this has not, this is not pressurized and therefore not, uh, you know, applying, supplying any uh, pressure here to this chain. But once it, this car gets going, that fills up with oil, uh, these will get closer and line up. Okay, now if these were off by clearly a tooth, then obviously <laughs> by more than this, you know, that's not going to make up the difference. This is very little, you know, they're off by very little. That's why I'm pretty sure it's just the tension that's supposed to be in here, okay? Okay, so I won't bore you with the rest of this. Uh, basically, the, the rest is gonna be just a reversal of removal. You know, I didn't cover the timing components and stuff and putting this car in the service position because I have a separate, separate video on doing a timing belt on a 1.8 liters uh, Volkswagen engine and you can look that up to be able to do these. Uh, but the rest is just going to be a reversal of removal. I'll, uh, you know, I'll uh, get it on on, uh, on video if there's anything that I think you should pay attention to. But uh, besides that, we're just going to cut all the way to the end and uh, when I'm ready to start the car, okay? Oh yeah, obviously don't forget to uh, torque down the other four, four bearings that are remaining, okay? Okay, so we just got done putting everything back together. One thing you want to do is, uh, before you put your valve cover on with your new valve cover gasket, you want to get some oil and uh, pour it over all your camshafts, your lifters, and also the camshaft chain at the back, so they're, they're uh, you know, pre-lubed before we go to start this car for good. Also, whatever you take off, you want to put it back in the reversal of the same sequence you took them off. That way you don't have to take something off again and put the other, you know, piece back on just to have it, uh, everything, uh, lined up and whatnot and uh, also you want to make sure you turn the crankshaft uh, you know two full rotations check your marks do it again check your marks make sure they all line up and make sure you got oil in the engine obviously <laughs> coolant and then uh, what we're going to do next is actually we're going to crank the engine for a total of 30 seconds you know splitting that up to you know five to six second uh, intervals just so we don't damage our starter that helps build pressure uh, so you know we when we go to start the car for the first time, there is uh, enough oil pressure, at least we, it builds enough oil pressure really quickly, so that way we, uh, we don't damage anything, okay? Okay, actually we're going to pull the fuel pump fuse, which is this guy right here. This, not this one, but the one above it, so third one from the bottom. As you were probably able to tell, the car sounds pretty good. It sounds like a car with compression. No weird noises, no clacking or nothing. So next we're going to start the car. And you know, also I want to make sure this fan is not catching anything. I still haven't put this back in the right position just in case I need to do any repairs. 
But make sure when you start the car, nothing is catching anything. And also make sure you put your belt for your alternator back on. And you know, I'm thinking, I've done a cylinder head job on the V6, so I'm thinking this is probably going to make some noise. There's going to be some lifter noise. Also, the camshaft chain tensioner is going to clack for a little while before it fills up with oil. But uh, that's normal if you did anything, everything right. <laughs> and uh, so it's probably going to, you know, tick and clack for a little bit, but then as it idles out and smooth out, there's going to be a lot of... Uh, the, the cleaning solutions we got on the exhaust manifold burning off, so there'll be some smoke and whatnot. But uh, you know, if you did all your timing marks right and you did all your put your, put every timing uh, components back in right, you should have you shouldn't have a problem. Okay. All right, here goes nothing. Okay, you know what, actually this car is running really smooth, uh, there's an exhaust leak back here because I, I forgot to put one of the bolts that goes to the turbo and, <laughs> and there's, the, there's the smoke I was telling you about. But the engine itself sounds pretty good, we got no check engine light, it's uh, running pretty decent actually and there isn't much clacking at all. Um, Okay, so I'm actually gonna stop this video because I don't want this uh, garage to fill up with smoke and pull this out and keep running it outside, okay? Okay, finally done with this project. Uh, yeah, so just gonna put this back on, put the bumper cover back on and this car should be roadworthy. But, uh, and actually before I do that, I'm gonna run the car, make sure there's no leaks, it's not overheating, not misfiring or anything, but uh, you know, there was actually a lot less uh, valve lifter ticks and you know camshaft clacking and whatnot than I was expecting. So pouring the oil all over those lifters and stuff probably helped a lot. Also, you know, cranking the engine before we started the car. Uh, what I would recommend is actually you can start the car with the oil, old engine oil in the car, and then run it, let it idle for five minutes. And after you're sure it's not overheating, not leaking anything, uh, you can then change the engine oil with the new engine oil filter that way if there's any debris and any from the when you were cleaning off the cylinder head uh, the top of the block and whatnot uh, you remove that from the engine yeah and with that said i'm gonna wrap this up hope you like this series if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more like it thanks for watching